Okay, thank you for joining us. We are joined by Ben Vanderplas, who scored a game high 17 points to lead the Bobcats to the 62 58 victory. Uh, for the media, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and your affiliation first. And we're going to begin our questioning with Ross Dellinger from Sports Illustrated. Ross, go ahead. Hey, Ben, this is Ross Dellinger with SI. Uh, I noticed after the game that you gave a, a embrace there to, to Coach Bennett and then pointed up to the to the stands. Can you take me through that a little bit? Yeah, um, obviously, uh, Coach Bennett uh, played with my dad in college. Um, that's the, the, the Bennett family is where my name comes from. Uh, that family has meant a lot to, uh, to my family over the years. And, um, you know, when we got matched up, I was just really excited to play, play against him. He's a great coach. Uh, and, and yeah, I got to talk to him for a little bit after the game. Uh, he asked where my dad was sitting at, so I pointed up there. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty cool moment with Coach Bennett. Okay, our next question is going to come from Elton Alexander. Elton, go ahead. Yeah, Ben, uh, Looks like lately here, I haven't seen you in the in the MAC tournament. You've been scoring your points in clusters, and uh, also seems like you're scoring them right in front of the uh, OU bench. What's what's up with that? Both of those. Uh, I got to give it to the bench, I guess. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot of guys on the bench who 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 do whatever it takes to to give us whatever energy they can throughout the entire game. Um, those guys on the bench, Mike Brown, uh, John Tenerovich. All those guys, um, they're always just into the game, into the game with us the entire time from start to finish. I don't know if you saw them swinging their towels around before both halves, but uh, those guys are are just such a big part of what we're doing this year. And uh, I don't know. I guess that might just be uh, what it is—a little bit of magic from them. Is that your spot on the floor, even uh, you know during the regular season? Um, yeah, that that left wing. Uh, I, I like that spot coming off pick and pops, things like that. Um, yeah, right in front of the bench. Uh, yeah, I guess they were just falling from there today. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Kevin Fielder with the fifth quarter. Kevin, go ahead. Hey, Ben, it's Kevin Fielder with fifth quarter. Uh, congratulations on the win. You know, one thing that Coach Bowles told us before the week was that none of your team had NCAA tournament experience. Was this everything you dreamed about when you were dreaming about playing in March? Man, uh, that game, that atmosphere, even with uh, the limited fans, um, it's a dream come true to be out here uh, playing the game I love. Uh, got a couple family members up in the stands playing with, with a team that I love playing with, playing for a coaching staff that I love playing with. Um, man, it was, it was a special moment out there, and, and uh, we're just going to keep, uh, keep it going. Okay, our next question is going to come from J.L. Kerbin with The Post. Go ahead, J.L. Hey, Ben, it's J.L. from The Post. Um, I noticed that it seemed like after every timeout, the team would be able to get a quick bucket or, you know, attack in a way that it wanted to. What was the communication like during the huddle, and what was sort of the coaching that you saw a lot of balls today? Yeah, uh, coming into those those timeouts, um, coach always has has something to say to us to get us get us back focused, and we just do a really good job of, of regrouping in those times. Um, they went on a little bit of a run. We got a timeout. Coach called one, and uh, we, we just come back in. Um, we focus up. We talk about what we need to do, what we need to do, and uh, we just we bring it back out on the court. And, and Coach Bowles definitely does a great job um, commanding those huddles. And then with this game being so tight from basically the tip to the end. How did it feel to get that run midway through the second half and give the team some breathing room? Yeah, obviously, uh, basketball is a game of runs. You always hear that. But um, yeah, that was our little run. Uh, we got a couple good shots, um, got a couple stops in a row. That's a big thing for us. We can string some stops together. Uh, we're a pretty good offensive team. So um, the big focus for us is getting those stops that lead to lead the buckets on the offensive end. Our next question is going to come from Joe Collins with WOUB. Joe, go ahead. Hey, Ben. Um, so I got some videos from some friends back in Athens, and Court Street is just absolutely going crazy after you guys won that game. Um, how does that uh, feel and sound to you, knowing that uh, fellow students at your school are just going crazy after that win? 
Yeah, um, that, that's great to hear. Uh, we, we've been seeing a lot of support on, on social media and things like that from, from our, our, uh, our students over at OU, a lot of fans back in Athens. And it's funny, uh, Ben Roderick came up to me after the game. He said, I bet you Court Street's going crazy right now. So uh, I'm excited to, to look at some videos of that. Uh, and and, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool that we have that much support um, back home from us. Okay, our next question is going to come from Zach uh, Brazilla from the New York Post. Go ahead, Zach. Hey, Ben. Uh, you guys, obviously, you finished fifth in the league. Do you? Is it hard to believe where you are right now? You know, it, I mean, what is it like about a not? It's not even two weeks, right? I mean, this this run you guys are on. I mean, what what's it like just to see how everything has changed? Yeah, um, we, we went through a couple things through the season. Uh, obviously, Jay Preston had a little bit of an injury early in the conference season, went through a couple COVID pauses, um, but we never let it get us down. Uh, we just kept kept fighting back, and uh, that resilience is showing now. It's showing the MAC tournament three games in three days. That was really big for us. And then uh, to, to get this week of preparation to come out and um, to beat a really, really good Virginia team, um, it's just it's really special to see uh, from this team. Do you do you guys hear about the the team nine years ago? Is that something people you, you're aware of? The team that made the Sweet Sixteen the, nine years ago? Yeah, uh, we've heard heard some things about it. Um, a great team, and uh, we saw some some of the players from that team uh, sending out messages on social media, some tweets and stuff. And to see their support, um, it's, it just feels really good. It's really exciting to to have them uh, behind us too. Our next question is going to come from Pete Thamel with Yahoo Sports. Ben, congrats on the uh, on the win tonight. Uh, for for a lot of America, they're seeing you for the first time, uh, Ohio for the first time, and, and Jason Preston for the first time. Could you speak to the? You, you're I'm sure you're accustomed to it in some sense. Could you speak to the show he put on and, and his story uh, and, and rise that we're all kind of getting to witness now? Yeah, um, Jay has a has a phenomenal story. Um, he lost his mom in high school, and and he's just gone through so much. Um, He's one of my best friends. Uh, he's my roommate. Uh, we, we drive everywhere together. Uh, we're always working out together. And, and to see him um, just come out this season and, and play the way that he's been playing and lead the way that he's been leading, uh, it's, it's just it's, an, it's amazing to watch. And I'm, I'm really, really thankful that, uh, that I'm in the position that I am to be um, on, on his team. Our next question is going to come from Christopher Heidel. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, hey Ben. Chris Heidel from Hermiton Radio in Baltimore. What does this win mean for you and your program, knocking off the basically the defending champs? Uh, yeah, obviously it's a huge win. Uh, being a 13 seed, coming out and, and, and getting a W in the in the NCAA tournament is always big. Um, I'm just I just think about the the fans back in Athens, uh, the students back in Athens, the the people who have been supporting us. Uh, this whole season um, through this pandemic, and and I'm just really thankful that we're able to uh, to get a, a win for them in in the tournament. Our next question is uh, going to be from Jason Arkley. Jason, go ahead. Uh, it's actually John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Um, go ahead. Uh, 30 years ago in the first round of the tournament, your dad scored a team high 17 points while playing for Dick Bennett at Green Bay when they scored 58 in a loss. Tonight in the first round of the tournament, you scored a team high 17 points while playing against Dick Santoni, whose team scored 58 points in a loss. My question, are you the kind of guy who just considers that a happy coincidence, or do you think there might be something more going on with it? Wow. That, <laughs> that's unbelievable. Um, that's, that's crazy to hear. Uh, uh, London McDay said something in the locker room about the basketball gods, so uh, maybe they have something to do with that. But um, that, that's really cool to <laughs> score the same amount of points as, as my pops in the first round. That's, that's, that's crazy. Okay, our next question is going to be from Jason Arkley. Jason, go ahead. Jason, go ahead. Ben. Uh, Jason Arkley from SUACBobcats.com. How was this team able to basically play Virginia basketball and beat it at its own game tonight? You guys typically play fast. Uh, you're more focused on the offensive end. What what flipped for you guys in that regard tonight? Um, I think something that helped us uh, was 
was our defense tonight. Um, guys like London McDay, uh, Mark Sears, Miles Brown um, coming in and, and defending at a really, really high level um, is, is really big for us. And that, that's a huge part of how we got this done. And obviously, having Jay Preston, uh, he's going to be the best player on the court in a lot of games. And, and, and having him out there is, is really helpful. And then uh, Ben Roderick out there, he, he's been hitting shots. He's been playing defense also. And Dwight Wilson uh, battling down there with the bigs. Um, just a lot, of, a, gr a lot of great pieces that, that went into this win. Hey, Ben, could, do you guys feel that way? Did you feel that way tonight? Jason was the best player on the floor, and, and that's why, despite the score and circumstance, you felt confident going into the last eight minutes? Uh, I'm not going to lie. Anytime we play a, a basketball game against, it doesn't matter who it is, I think Jason Preston's the best player on the court. Um, I've seen him do things uh, that I haven't seen anybody else do, and, and the way that he plays the game is just its so phenomenal. And, and yeah, anytime we step on the court, I think, I think we got the best player on the court out there. Okay, we have time for two more. Um, go back to Zachary Braziller. Ben, what, what is the confidence level right now of this team? You obviously, you, you, you controlled the MAC tournament all three games. You beat the defending champions today. I mean, how far can you guys go? Uh, confidence is a huge thing for us. And uh, yeah, I, I think you guys might be able to see it, but we're out there just playing free, playing confident. Um, I know me especially. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, I've been talking a lot to Jay about, about P.J. Tucker and how he goes out and, and guards one through five and just plays with irrational confidence. And that's what I've been trying to do, uh, just go out there and, and just play free. And, uh, and yeah, that's a huge part of, this, a part of this run for us is confidence. Okay, and our final question will come from Pete Thamel with Yahoo Sports. Yeah, Ben, we, America got a taste of Ohio tonight. How, how, uh, how far can you guys go? I mean, you talked about that confidence. Where, where can this take you? Um, I think we go into every single game expecting to win, preparing to win. Um, so, uh, you know, um, we're going to try to win the whole thing. That's, that's what we're, we're here to do. Um, we're we're going to try to, we're, what is it, five more games? We're going to try to win five more games one at a time. Okay, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, congratulations on tonight's uh, victory, and best of luck in uh, the next round against uh, Creighton. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay, for the media, we'll be joined momentarily by uh, Coach Bowles. Again, please use this uh, time to raise your hand. If you have a question to ask for Coach Bowles, we'll get started shortly. Okay, we're joined by Coach uh, Jeff Bowles. Uh, Coach will ask for an opening statement from you. And then for the media, uh, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. So Coach, please go ahead and give us an opening statement and then we'll go to questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, just really, really proud of our guys. Um, you know, there were multiple times in the second half that they could have broke and we always talk about Ben, but don't break. And we got down 38-31. And, um, you know, Ben Vanderplus made some huge plays, you know, in the second half. Uh, Jason Preston made some great plays, made some big free throws down the stretch. And uh, very fortunate to win the game. Uh, I want to give, you know, Virginia all the credit in the world for what they went through. Um, you know, tough to, you know, go through a COVID pause and not practice and, and fly in the day before. And, uh, you know, that they, they Miss some shots that they normally make. So feel very fortunate and very grateful. Okay, our first question tonight will come from uh, Joe Collins with WOUB. Uh, Go ahead. Hey, Coach, congratulations on the win. Um, as you were saying, it got up to 38-31. And then af after about the 10-minute mark of the second half, you've matched that up to that point total, 31 points in the final 10 minutes. Um, what did you guys uh, change going into each timeout? Like, what did you start seeing that Virginia was doing that you were able to start getting a lot more baskets? Yeah, thanks for the question, Joe. I think when they went small, you know, we got kind of discombobulated. And, you know, when Huff came back in the game, you know, we were able to do some things, put, you know, Dwight Wilson back in there. And I thought after every timeout, I thought our guys did a great job of executing. Um, you know, even, you know, when the shot clock was run down, we tried to, you know, shrink the, uh, game a little bit, and uh, you know Ben Roderick had a great back cut layup. You know Jason Preston was phenomenal off the ball screen, 
And, uh, you know, our guys just kept their poise and, and did a great job of executing. Okay, our next question is going to be from Elton Alexander. Go ahead, Elton. Uh, Elton Alexander, Cleveland Plain Dealer. Uh, you just touched on it a little bit, but maybe expound, expanded uh, style of play. I mean, you came off three games in the MAC tournament where you're busting 80 points a night, shooting a pretty good percentage. And tonight, uh, it seemed like both teams were playing deliberate on purpose. You didn't seem to try and push it at all. Um, just kind of talk about that. And evidently, it's something you plan to do. Well, I think. Thanks for the question, Elton. I think, you know, they, they kind of make you play that way. They don't send all the guys to the boards. You know, they get back in transition. And when you come to March Madness NCAA tournament, you know, half-court offense, half-court defense, execution is going to win you the game. And, uh, you know, just really proud of our guys. I thought we got some really big stops late. You know, Miles Brown, for him not to play in the first half and come in and play some great defense in the second half, um, you know, the way they play, I mean, they were 40% three-point shooting team coming in. And, um, you know, we, we messed up the one handoff late uh, where they cut it to two. But uh, our guys made some big-time plays on both ends down the stretch. Our next question will be from Pete Thamel with Yahoo Sports. Uh, Jeff, Pete Thamel from uh, Yahoo. Congrats on the, uh, congrats on the win. Um, you, you had said this week that Jason Preston's story was, was going to be a movie. Did, did they get a pretty good scene tonight? Yeah, th thanks, Pete. I, I think, you know, I, I told him this, this is where stars are born. You know, legacies are made. And, you know, give them a lot of credit. You know, Clark's a very good defender. But uh, Jason in the second half was able to get uh, around a couple of those. Had some huge rebounds. I think, what do you have, 13 rebounds? Uh, 11 points, 8 assists, 3 turnovers. Just a phenomenal effort. And, you know, he's the heart and soul of our team. And, you know, the world saw today who he is and, and what he's able to do. And uh, just really proud of him. Thanks, Jeff. Your next question will come from Zach Brazilla with the New York Post. Hi, Jeff. Uh, Zach Brazilla, New York Post. What, what do you think really changed for you guys? You know, you, I, I know Jason missed a few games, but you finished fifth in the league. So to kind of go through the league tournament the way you did and obviously then to, to beat a team like Virginia, is, is there anything that kind of happened? Yeah, well, thanks for the question. I, I think, you know, we had won six in a row, I believe, before the pause. And, you know, it's a deceiving five seed because, you know, we were nine and five. And I think Toledo was 14 and four. Akron and Kent might have been 12 and five or 12 and six. Buffalo was like 11 and six. So we were all right there with the losses. You know, we just didn't have the wins because we had so many games canceled. And we knew going into the tournament that we, we felt really good about our chances. We knew we could beat anybody that we played. And, you know, coming off that pause, I mean, I don't, I don't think most people understand. We had three games in 36 days, you know, the, and then we played Thursday, uh, yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday in the MAC tournament. And, you know, give our strength trainer, Jared Azar, our, our trainer Tyler Congrove and our staff, you know, a lot of credit for really, you know, hydration and, and massages and whirlpools and, you know, monitoring the conditioning because there's no blueprint when you come off of that, that long pause. And, you know, we, we had one practice, uh, 5v5, with a, a GA, a manager, that uh, before the MAC, or the three game and five, three games and five day stretch. And uh, we had limited practice and, you know, so I want to I want to shout out to our staff uh, for helping us out. And Je um, Jeff, I, I I don't know how familiar you know the team is with you know the the Sweet Sixteen group of nine years ago. Is that something that you've talked to them about that you know it can happen? And did you you know is that something that kind of played a factor in here at all? Well, yeah, I think you know we walk in and, and I do. I, I look at the banners every single day that I walk in, and from my press conference two years ago. Uh, to every single practice, and and I think you know something like that shows that it can it can happen. And you know none of our guys had ever played in a MAC tournament up in Cleveland before. They were loose, they had fun, they were talking, listening to music before the game, and it showed in in, in Cleveland. And I think coming in here same way, they had confidence and they had a belief. And I told them after the game, the power of unity, the power of belief, the power of confidence is huge. And if you go all the way back to the Illinois game. Uh, you know, we showed we can play with anybody in the country. You know, no disrespect to Illinois, but I thought we should have won the game. 
And that game really set the tone and helped us, you know, win this game with a comp from a confidence standpoint. Our next question is going to come from Lucas Weiss with the undefeated. Go ahead. Lucas, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Lucas Weiss with the undefeated. Thanks, so, uh, thanks for, the, for the opportunity to ask you a question, and congrats on the win. Uh, you mentioned off the top how, how grateful you are for this win, but for you personally, just given your coach journey from being an assistant at Ohio to an assistant at Ohio State and other schools, just how special is tonight's victory for you, just given your, your coaching journey? Yeah, it's awesome. And, you know, when I, I, like, when I took the job, you know, I, I dreamt of this. And, you know, last year we got it taken away like everyone else. And this year coming in, you know, that was our goal. And, you know, Coach Motto's in the stands tonight, and he's been a huge mentor for me. And for him to, you know, see this, um, just awesome where, where we're at right now. And hopefully we keep this thing going. Our next question is going to come from Dan Wolken from USA Today Sports. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, between the uh, five-minute mark and, and the one-minute mark, you guys made five baskets. Just how, how difficult is that to do, you know, against a – team like Virginia in, in this kind of setting. And then with the 240 to go coming out of the timeout, you guys were able to get that layup. Was that a called play? And can you just kind of take take me through that sequence? Yeah, that was that was huge. And, you know, give our guys a lot of credit for the offensive execution. Uh, like you said, from the five minute mark on, I, I, I'm not sure what we were, you know, total, but it seemed like every time, you know, we did something, our guys ended up making a positive play. And out of the timeout, you know, that was a design play. Uh, you know, they started trapping that ball screen and, uh, you know, it was a wide open, uh, you know, pass down low and, you know, that was a huge bucket for us. Okay, our next question is going to come from J.L. Curvin with The Post. Go ahead, J.L. Hey, Coach, it's J.L. from The Post. Um, all season long from, from the Illinois game, their game of the year to now, it seems like the team knows where to find that place to respect for an opponent, but still being confident. As a coach, how do you, how did you approach this week of still being able to like, to say, hey, you're playing the defending champs, but you're just as good as, if not better than they are? Yeah, you know, I think you saw the growth, JL. Thanks for the question. And, you know, we went, we started out really well, you know, playing really well this, uh, this year. And then, you know, Ben Ryder got hurt against Marshall. Jason Preston got hurt, missed four games. And we had, we had some ups and downs. And, you know, we got beat by uh, uh, Kent State at, by 10 at home, and that was kind of the turning point for our guys. And, you know, the, the long pause and our guys coming back, you know, we're, we're playing like we did early in the season. And, you know, I, I just tell them all the time, play with confidence. You know, we, we, we played that first game of the three-game uh, and five-day stretch against Akron, and we were without Jason Preston and Dwight Wilson. And I didn't know what to expect. We were off 21 days, and like I said, we practiced with nine guys on that Sunday. And our guys came out with a great focus and intensity. And, you know, different guys stepped up throughout the course of the game. And, and at that point, you know, we just kind of kept it going. And uh, these guys, they love each other. They got a great bond. And, and, you know, like I told them, confidence is huge. And that's one thing going into that Akron game we talked about. Play with uber, superior, ultra confidence. And our guys have been doing that. Okay, our next question is going to come from Bill Rabinowitz with the Columbus Dispatch. Go ahead. Hi, Jeff. Congratulations. Um, you are uh, the only team, even in, in the broader area, still alive in this tournament. Do you think you get a sense of, of the bandwagon getting pretty big for you guys? And, and how, how much you, uh, does that matter to you? Would it matter to your team that you're the, you're the only game in town now? Yeah, I mean, I think we're just happy to be moving on. You know, we're very grateful. And, and uh, you know, our, guy, our guys came in expecting to win the game. And the fact that we're the only one left, you know, I think that's great for, you know, social media and fans. But our bandwagon is, you know, it, it, keep coming. You know, we want everyone supporting us that we can. And I think this is great for our university. Um, you know, I talked to a group of people about an hour and 15 minutes before the game and really thanked Dr. Nellis for hiring me. You know, he was huge in the process and, uh, you know, believing in me to come back to my alma mater. And, you know, this is what I envisioned. So 
hopefully we'll keep this thing going and we'll take every Bobcat fan uh, that we can get. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have time for a couple more. Uh, Jason Arkley, go ahead, Jason. Hey, Jeff, uh, Jason Arkley, SUACBobcats.com. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to make too much of this, but did tonight feel a little bit for you personally like like righting a wrong? So many players at the mid-major level get one chance in the NCAA tournament. You got one chance as a player. It, it didn't work out for you. Getting it done as a coach with this team, is there some – I don't know, some redemption, some, some, some relief in, in being able to, to go back and kind of correct the course a little bit. Yeah, I, I, thanks for the question, Jason. Uh, I don't think for me, like, I don't think like that. I just think how happy I am for our players, this university, you know, their families, what they've sacrificed throughout the course of the year to get to this point, and, you know, every student athlete, male and female. And I think it's awesome for our university. I know I've probably got a million text messages you know, Bobcat Nation throughout the world. Uh, this is great for everybody, great for our university, and great for our program. Okay, Pete Thamel, Yahoo Sports. Um, Jeff, obviously you, uh, you know, you go into your next game, you're moving on, and I'm sure your focus is gonna shift there, there pretty fast. What about this team is built to perhaps make a sustained run here? Yeah, thanks, Pete. I think, you know, th this, this tournament is about, you know, guard play. And we have one of the best guards in the country. And you look at Ben Vanderplas, who's a tough inside-out matchup. You know, Dwight Wilson, a transfer. You know, we, we just got a lot of great pieces. And if you look at our roster, I think we have five guys averaging double figures. You know, a sixth guy averages nine points a game. So we got great balance. And, you know, certain guys, different guys step up on different nights. And I think... You know, you can tell by watching them play. They love each other. The bench is awesome. The energy level is awesome. And, uh, you know, they play for each other. So I think, you know, with a guy like Jason Preston, Ben Vanderplas, anything can happen in a 40-minute game. Okay, Joe Collins from WOUB. Uh, Go ahead, Joe. Hey, Jeff. So um, first off, I'll just say a little thing. Um, with your guys' win today, uh, you busted every bracket uh, in America now, which means there's no more perfect brackets. Um, but uh, in all seriously, uh, today, obviously, there was only a limited amount of fans that could come, but it really seems like the OU fan base was really loud, really getting into it, and a big part of uh, how you guys are able to be successful. Um, and that's something you've always said. Uh, of what is it about Bobcat Nation that this is just so fun to play in front of. Yeah, I thought our fans here were awesome. And, you know, we talked about that in Cleveland. You know, if we would have made that run with fans there, there would have been 13,000 Bobcats, you know, in Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. And uh, like I said, Bobcat Nation is proud. I know they stand up and cheer uh, for old Ohio. And uh, hopefully we keep, keep this thing going. And whatever next venue we have, we'll have some more tickets. And uh, we will invite every Bobcat, you know, to the arena. We have time for two more. Uh, Bill Rubinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Jeff. Um, how much preparation were you able to do for Creighton? Um, obviously, you were just concentrating on, on Virginia. Do you even do any kind of advanced stuff? What do you know about them? Yeah, I, I don't know a whole lot. I know they're really good. You know, got some really good players. Um, you know, our assistant coaches have done the prep work. So we'll head back to the hotel, uh, get our Chick fil A and uh, start prepping for Creighton uh, you know, tonight and then come in and, and get our game plan. And our guys have done a really good job you know, throughout the course of the year when we had three games in three days uh, at Illinois and then the MAC tournament and then even the three games in five days of you know, taking game plan film to the court. And uh, you know, so our guys will be locked in. Shouldn't you be going to Dairy Queen instead of uh, Chick-fil-A? Touche. Uh, maybe we should get some ice cream for the boys. <laughs> Most definitely. All right, and our final question will come from Dan Wolken with USA Today Sports. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, raise my hand there. My okay. Fault. Oh, come All on, right, Dan. Kev, uh, One more, Dan. Uh, we have a question then from Kevin Fielder from the fifth quarter. Coach, you've, you've kind of touched on this a few times, but, uh, you know, if you may expand – what does a win like this do for the Ohio basketball program? You know, how, how does it continue to help draw fans in and, you know, keep kind of trying to build the program up? 
Yeah, thanks for the question. I, I think it's huge for a lot of reasons. You know, recruiting, uh, fan base, alumni, university, and you know, it, it's something that every school like ours dreams about. And with social media the way it is right now, you know, I can imagine what Court Street's doing, and uh, just you know, our, our goal is to represent Ohio University the right way on the floor, off the floor, and we got 15 great kids who do that, and. Uh, you know, I know, I know they're proud of them. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Again, congratulations on the victory, and uh, good luck in the next round. Okay, thank you, everybody. For all the media on the call, a transcript of Coach Bull's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at ncaa.com backslash transcripts. A recording of this press conference uh, will be available in the NCAA digital media hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Thank you for joining us this evening.